okay? Good, by God's grace. Amen. Can get everybody's attention here. You know, as I'm standing here, I just, uh, I'm thinking about a lot of different things. And, uh, first of all, let's, let's pray, okay? Can we pray? I want everybody's attention for a few minutes. Everybody's going to walk away from here with a big bag of groceries, hallelujah, and a nice big hot meal in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for this time. Bless our workers. Bless the people that are here on the streets, Lord God. Bless each family, Lord. We pray that you would be glorified in the city of Rochester, Lord. We don't need another program. We don't need any of that stuff. We need Jesus. This city needs a powerful move of God's Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we ask that it would start even right here today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you are the source of our strength. You're our, our rock and our fortress, Lord God. We pray that you would be lifted up and glorified right now here in this place. Soften our hearts to hear your word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, Lord, bring faith, Lord, to us by your word. We ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, last night I was, I taught on, uh, our outreach last night, uh, in Philippians, uh, where it talks about we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. And I, and I was, uh, you know, I heard there's some comet around here. Did you hear that? There's something, star thing blowing in the sky over here. It's supposed to be visible at nighttime around 9.30 tonight or so. Uh, that's really cool. But I thought about that for a second, and I thought about uh, that light. That light is so far away, yet you can see it. <clears throat> and with some people in life, God, it seems like it's, God is so far away, but he's right there close by, even though we don't realize it. And I love King David in the Bible. King David uh, was being chased by Saul, who was trying to kill him. Imagine that. You're, you're, you're the king, and, and somebody's trying to kill you. And you're running away, and you're, and you're hiding from, from people, and, and trying to get away from being killed and sought after. And David is in a place where he is being chased. But David's faith, he knew that his faith was not in the power of man or the things of this world. He knew that his faith was in the, in the living God. He knew that his faith was in God. His, his source of his strength was in the Lord Jesus. His source of his strength was in God Almighty. And that's what we need to do as people, especially as people of God. If you don't know God, and I, you, you really don't know. But as a Christian, we have to keep running this race. We have to keep pressing on. We have to keep grabbing on to God. We have to keep making the Lord uh, the, the ruler and the reigner of our hearts and, and leading us and directing us and guiding us. And David realized that. And in Psalm 27, I'm going to read this, just a, a verse here. And David says this, he says in Psalm 27, verse 1, he says, let's do this, I want you to hear this. He says, the Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then he goes on, he says, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? 
David realized that God was his light. And God was the, the salvation, the only salvation. The Bible says there's no other way that we must be saved. There's only one salvation. There's only one way to Almighty God, and that's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I was, let me read this verse. And I'm going to add a couple verses to it in the New Living Translations. Listen, listen to this. Same verses. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Verse 2, When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Verse 4, the one thing that I ask of the Lord, and this is my prayer for me, for my family, and for you and I today, this is my prayer. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing that I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. I want to be a follower of Jesus. Amen. I want to be a man of integrity. I want to be a godly man. I want to be a man that no matter what comes my way, the Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. When Satan comes in and he tries to rob and steal and destroy from our lives. The Bible says that we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that friend is Jesus Christ. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And it says that no man can come to the Father but through him. All right. Did you ever feel like you're just overwhelmed with things? I'll be the first one to raise my hand. You ever feel overwhelmed with the things in life? Is life hard sometimes? Yeah. Did you ever feel like that? I know I do. The reality is, is that we will go through trials and tribulations in our life. Jesus said that. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ will lift up a standard against those things. When the enemy appears to have the upper hand and our cause is lost, realize this, that you as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ are more than a conqueror. You have the ability you have the spirit of the living God, if he lives and dwells inside of you, to give you the power, to give you the strength, to be more than a conqueror in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> we got to realize, just like David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Ultimately, God is our light and our salvation. The darkness will lift and our Savior will come in those times of trouble. He will settle all the scores and he will live in the beauty of his presence. There's going to come a day where there's going to be no more sin as a believer. There's going to be no more trials. There's going to be no more injustice. There's going to be no more sins. There's going to be no more sinfulness in this world because you're in the presence of Almighty God. And it only comes through a living relationship with Jesus. Did you hear that? Heaven, heaven, okay? How many want to go to heaven? Want to go to heaven? There's only one way that can heaven can come to you. And that's if you turn from your sin. You turn from your sin. 
Not only be sorry for your sins, you ever sin? Oh, I'm sorry, but you know, you run right back to it, right? Being sorry, being having a godly fear and a godly sorrow. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's a great thing as a Christian to be constantly repenting. I have to repent a lot of times during the day. God forgive me for that. God forgive me for that. And that's not me, that's the Holy Spirit that lives in you. There's only one way for heaven to come to you, and that's through repentance. Turning from your sin. Now, let me just give you an example. I'm almost done. Me? I was a drug addict for a long time. I was a dirty, rotten drug addict. 16 years of my life wasted because I went down a road that I wanted to go down, that I chose to go down, that I walked down that road myself. I didn't do it with God's strength. I didn't have the power to overcome those things when I was walking that road. And I did that for a long time. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Sin separated me from a mighty God. And God is not willing that any would perish, but all would come to what? Repentance. He doesn't want us to go to hell. He doesn't want us to choose that road. He wants us to choose his way. He wants us to go to his road, down his road, the way he wants it. It's your choice. And one night, one night, in my apartment, the greatest day of my life, I got down on my knees. And I said, God, if you're real, and Jesus is the way, then I need my life to change. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stop doing drugs. And I said to Jesus, I said, if you're the way, God, then please, I surrender to you. I surrendered my will. I surrendered the way I wanted to go, and I handed it over, and I laid it down right at the foot of the very cross of Christ. And you know what happened? In one second, one second, I felt the power of God like a lightning bolt come down into that room, and the Holy Spirit came in that room, and it flooded my heart. You know what I, could, know what I did? The only thing I could do was cry. I just began to weep and cry like a little baby, crying out to God, not shaking my fist at God, why did you do this, why did you do this, shaking, I came to God with my arms wide open and my heart wide open and I said, Jesus, please forgive me. I don't want to live this life anymore. I don't want to live the way I'm living anymore. I don't want this emptiness in my heart. I don't want this hole in my heart. I need to be filled with your spirit. And I cried. And that was the night, that was the moment that Jesus became the light of my salvation. And that was Hallelujah. the Hallelujah. It's been 22 years ago. I think it's going on 23. 23 years ago almost. I ain't touched no drugs. I've been set free. Hallelujah. The Bible says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says that Jesus came to heal. Did you hear that? Some of you today, look at me now. You need healing. Now, maybe not physical, but you need your heart to be healed. The Bible says he came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives, the captives free. free. What is that thing in your life? 
that is keeping you from fully coming to God. God wants to set you free today. He came to heal the broken heart. He came to set the captives free. The Bible says that he came to open up the prison doors. Some of you are in bondage. And it's like prison. You can't get out of it. There's chains on you. And I want to let you know today that Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary came and he paid the penalty for your sins on the cross. And the Bible says that if today, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't say, I don't want it. You come with a broken, contrite, and honest heart before God, and he will break the chains and anxiety and bondage in your life. And you know what he does with that? Remember I told you I was in my apartment? I became born again. God, who is rich in mercy and grace, came into my life that moment. And I had a new heart. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, If any man is in Christ, he becomes a new person. The old man passes away. And behold, all things become new. The things that you want to do, you don't want to do them anymore. You know why? Because the power of God has flooded your heart. And he's given you the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to say no, to be free. There's a liberty, there's a freedom in Christ. And some of you today, you don't know Jesus. You may know about him. You may go to church. You may think you're a good person. You may think that if your good things outweigh your bad things, that you're okay with God. Jesus ain't no homeboy. He's Lord and Savior of all. And you're not sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven. Look at me, guys. Man, things are rough in this world today. Evil is running like crazy. Turn on the news. What I got to do? Evil. The Bible says that in the last days, men would call evil good. You know that? It says it right in here. Some of you need your heart to change. And God wants to do that today for you. Jesus died for you. Look at me. Jesus died for you. Personally. And all he wants you to do, he wants one thing from you. He wants you to surrender your heart. And if you surrender your heart to him and give him your heart, the Bible says he'll give you a new heart, right? And you too could have that freedom, just like I did 23 years ago. But you can do one of two things. You can hear God's voice today and walk through this line, get yourself some meat, get yourself some frozen food, get yourself a big old bag of groceries, get yourself a hot meal, and walk away from here with stuff that is going to perish. Or you could say, today is the day that I receive Christ and have eternal life that nobody can ever take away from me. Neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor powers. There's no demon in hell that can separate you from the love of God. When you die someday, let me tell you something, the devil is running wild. And he wants to destroy you. He doesn't want you to come to God's word because he knows that it's absolute truth. And the truth will set you free. One more thing. Today, don't harden your heart. Come unto me, Jesus said. All of you that are heavy laden, are you hurting today? Are you empty today? So come unto me, all of you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You got to know Jesus. You gotta have a relationship with Jesus. It's not about just going to church and feeling good. 
and doing whatever you want. You gotta follow. So, if this message today, look at me guys, if this message has ministered to your heart today, and you want to have a relationship with God, and you want God's light to shine down upon you, and come into your heart, and change you, in a good way. I want to give you that opportunity right now. You know, we, we just, we just, I want to just raise your hand if that's you. Just raise your hand up. It's okay. If you want to receive the Lord into your life. Maybe you're here and you just want to be able to walk stronger with God. And have a deeper relationship with God. I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand up. I'm raising my hands up. Because I need it myself. I need it. I'm nothing. I'm just a man who needs God just as much as anybody else. So I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you need prayer for something in your life. You're a believer. You just need prayer for something. Uh, ask one of our people with the shirt on. We would love to come out and pray for you in the name of Jesus. And so, let's bow our hearts before the Lord right now. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for every person here today, Lord. I pray that you would shine your light down upon our hearts, Lord. That you would draw us closer to you, Lord. Lord, it wouldn't be about a religious thing. It wouldn't be about religion. Lord, it would be about drawing closer and deep, deeper in our relationship with you, Lord. So, Father, bless the people today, Lord. We pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting. We pray your blessing and healing upon them, Lord. We pray for those that haven't surrendered to you, that don't know you, Lord God. We pray that a seed was planted in their heart today. And it will begin to be watered and grow some more for the next person to come and water it more. And Lord, we also pray your blessing over this ministry and over the food and over everything that goes on from here on in. Lord. May things be done decently and in order and for your glory. We ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.